Well, there, greetings all, and welcome back to one of the rare episodes of the Grumpy Gardener's Medicine Show. <laughs> Certainly, this is a time for medicine, is it not? Yes, we have much disease rampant in the planet at the moment. Well, since the very beginning of this whole COVID-19 thing, um, I've been pounding on a drum <laughs> about it. Most of my uh, uh, relatives believe I'm probably mad. And a few of my friends are, know for sure I am, but they knew that ahead of time. Um, but in observing what I was seeing initially when COVID first hit and uh, started spreading around the country, I had intuition on this. I looked at it, and my intuition told me, gut reading, this is not just a lung disease. This is affecting the way people are thinking. I had no proof. It was just the gut feeling, what I was seeing. And so I started doing research, and this has been ongoing right along. And every time I find another article done by doctors in England or someplace that indicates that there seems to be a link between COVID-19 and um, psychological disorders, uh, that I will then pass it along to friends and family and go, look, see, I'm telling you, the whole country's nuts because of a virus. <laughs> Yeah, they go, oh, Bill, they're just angry because they're in lockdown, you know. I don't know about that. Um, so I also then started to look at other statistics, compiling statistics on uh, auto accidents, for instance. Auto accidents uh, during the peak COVID where everybody was locked down early on. Uh, we had half of the cars on the road in the United States that we ordinarily have but there was 35% more traffic accidents going on. Half the cars, but 35% more accidents. That's basically, what, 70% more accidents, you know, uh, than usual. And so then I started looking at domestic violence. Oh, boy, that was way up, too. Then I started looking at gun violence in cities, and... Uh, that was way up all across the board, too. Uh, of course, I mean, I'm not going to even mention about people and their political dissatisfaction, okay? Uh, there's obviously something going on there, too. Uh, but I went through a whole lot of different statistics that had nothing to do with disease and nothing to do really with, you know, with, uh, with social unrest at the moment. Um, you know, things like, like traffic accidents. Um, they started to correlate. It all started to add up that this was more than a lung disease, that people didn't realize it, but they were being affected mentally by this disease. Well, then time moves on. I keep passing along articles to friends and family are going, oh, you're nuts. And, well, of course, now I live here in Hawaii, and compared to most of the rest of the United States, here on the Big Island, we got almost no disease. The COVID is here. There's a few cases, but we don't have an epidemic here. It's you know, and people are being pretty careful. The old, uh, uh, you know, how they uh, venerate the the kapuna here that you take care of the old people, and the old people are wise and they're important to us. And so a lot of the young people have been careful. They're wearing masks and things are. They take care of each other here. That's all I can tell you about it. And uh, it seems to be working. We're getting along fairly well. Um, I personally, I guess I don't know anybody myself directly on the island that's had a case. Off island, yes. But, uh, you know, I even had a friend here in the hospital who's uh, who works there with medicine. And well, he's the first guy with a shot. Hey, uh, <laughs> big deal. Anyhow... Since we really didn't have much going on over here, as far as the disease was concerned, I started looking around at the society and checking out to see, well, are the statistics in Hawaii out of line? Guess what? It didn't match what was going on in the mainland United States. 
our traffic accidents didn't increase. Okay, uh, there there has been some more domestic violence. People locked up tight in little rooms. I guess you know. Yeah, that one. But no, no more gun violence either. Uh, we don't generally have a lot of that here anyway. But we didn't have some of these statistics that I was seeing in the mainland that were out of line here. And neither did I see so much social disorder. Okay, people weren't angry, waving guns, you know, and running around screaming and stuff, setting fire to stuff. Um, and so I said, all right, why is it so different? Well, you know, we all know we got Aloha over here and all that. And yeah, it, it's real, but it's also, you know, what do you say and how do you act, right? I mean, I don't think it takes too much to get anybody started, no matter how laid back they are. But it wasn't starting here. We're just not seeing it. Nor are we seeing disease. All right, then, the latest study. All right, I've run across a series of different studies now to substantiate much of what I've been saying about the psychological effects. It appears that in people who have had the disease, after they recover, approximately 20% of those individuals are seeking help for psychological disorders. And these are people who never previously had gone to get help with a psychological problem. It appears that people are going to get help for depression, anxiety, and PTSD. Those are the three main ones. Now, there are some cases in England of a lady who hallucinates monkeys and lions in the house, you know, and stuff too, but this is very rare. Uh, it's an awful lot of people that are uh, getting anxious and having depression because of this disease. The study I found yesterday indicates, this is a Taiwan study, and what they have discovered is people who got the COVID and then were over the lung ailment part and all of that, the major part of the illness, when they were checked, they found out that the gut flora, the bacteria and the culture in our intestines was whacked. Their digestive tract bacteria or flora were w knocked way out of line from what was human normal. Well, I don't know, you know how many of you are aware that, that the gut is the second brain, that we have both bacteria in the gut that produce dopamine, which uh, is basically what keeps us happy and smiley and cheery, and we have receptor cells in the gut that pick this dopamine up. And so uh, the gut is very much responsible for maintaining a cheerful state of mind in a human being. Uh, if you have the wrong culture in your, back to, in your colon um, and in your GI, uh, you will experience uh, psychological problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, my butt runs the shows. I always knew that. Um, so, so what they're discovering and what else they're finding is that the bacteria level isn't going back to normal anytime soon. So that this appears to be a relatively permanent problem for people. Uh, this is bad because it is putting the thumb right on top of what I have been seeing all along. And it's that this is a psychological disease. It's in a weird way because it's affecting the bacteria in your gut is how it's doing it. And then that's making you crazy. Yeah, it's, well, <laughs> it's affecting the way you think. Let's just put it that way. Uh, you know, whether the guys at the Capitol building were because of COVID, I don't know. But I never seen nothing like that. I wasn't around the Civil War. So, uh, what I've been seeing all along is now definitely starting to come to the top. Many of my relatives and friends have stopped arguing with me. But of course, some of my good friends say, oh, well, I don't worry about that stuff anyway because I eat yogurt and take probiotics all the time. Well, you know, the problem there really is that the uh, um, the yogurt has the acidophilus in it and acidophilus will you know culture in our intestines um, so uh, do the probiotics have a series of different things in there that uh, you know in many different ways help the bacteria in the colon so this this is a good thing I'm not arguing it 
But the problem is, is that that original culturing of that bacteria or that flora, it comes from our mother. <laughs> By passing down the birth canal, okay, need I say more, basically, we pick it up from her gut as we're born. And that's how we get the initial inoculation. And if you don't get that inoculation, or if something happens to it later, in some cases, you'll never have the gut bacteria that you actually need to lead a normal life. This is very possible. And once it's missing, you can't replace it with yogurt. Yogurt uh, will help culture your colon, like say if you've taken antibiotics and you killed off a lot of your bacteria in your body, you know, and we're I think about 80% foreign cells and only 20% human cells, we're mostly something else, not people. Uh, that's how we are. Everything is living in us and on us and all over us. So. But uh, the gut bacteria is, is not easily replaceable. Uh, yeah, you go kiss butt, maybe you get some. <laughs> That's fringy, huh? Uh, so, this is not an easy thing to cure. Uh, the, the acidophilus will help uh, prevent something else from getting started in your gut in the meantime, but acidophilus is not one of the cultures in your gut. And I looked up the things that actually live inside of your your GI, and none of them are in probiotics or in yogurt. Okay, so the, if you lose some of these, you can remain permanently disabled unless somebody can figure out how to reculture them again. I think when you take that yogurt or the probiotics, what that does is it allows the gut to be able to have a safety shield, so to speak, or um, it will keep those hostile things from getting going in there so you won't get a bad culture. And in the meantime, I believe that most of your original flora will begin to grow back out again. Now, it's only supposition on my part. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> okay. Um, but I think this is probably true, is that when we take the antibiotic, for instance, and eat yogurt, we probably don't completely kill off the cultures that were in our body. We just got to give them time to get back, you know. And that's that's what the yogurt's for. So well, another friend of mine says, well, I eat blue cheese. That's all right. And I said, oh, man, that's bread mold. Uh, that, that stuff gets in my mushroom cultures when I'm doing grain spawn. You can smell it. it smells like blue cheese. I have to throw them out. Uh, I don't care for blue cheese much myself. But uh, blue cheese would then contain molds that have penicillin, so they're antibiotic. So this is not good either because if you have damaged uh, uh, flora in your colon, penicillin might even hurt it worse. So no, that's not the solution to the problem either. Uh, one thing that I did note though, and that is today I dug yacon from my garden. Um, and I've recently discovered that yacon is a very serious, strong probiotic. Uh, it actually supposedly will expel uh, undesirable bacteria from the colon. Uh, in my case, it probably does it because your colon makes me fart like a racehorse, so that's probably how it's expelling things. But uh, it's what they say. And so here we have a garden vegetable that could be helpful during the COVID. Uh, according to the article I read out of Taiwan on this gut bacteria thing, there's also a number of other related things. Oh my goodness. How susceptible you are to the disease because of the colon. Uh, how uh, uh, how bad your lingering side effects afterwards might be, after effects, you know, uh, long timer stuff. Yeah, it all actually depends quite a bit on what happened to your gut bacteria. Uh, I'm not going to bother to go into all this because it's technical. It's pretty boring, uh, actually. Uh, it's just the basic fact of what we're seeing here, you know, that I think is important. I am going to put links uh, on this to uh, a couple articles that illustrate what I say from the scientific viewpoint instead of the gardener's viewpoint. But there you have it, folks. <laughs> eat more you can and I'd be darn careful about COVID because uh, you know even if you uh, don't cough yourself to death you're going to lose your mind Aloha hang loose folks